Here's to whiskey kisses, a peachy taste of sin, an Edinburgh morning with the smell of... Greetings, whiskey folk, and welcome back to Drinking Out Loud. I am your host as ever, Adam Bradshaw, and we are here in the Dram Association studio at the Strathcona Hotel for another exciting episode of Drinking Out Loud with a very special guest, someone who you might have seen before in this studio, actually sat exactly where I am a few months ago. Welcome to the show, Bryony Ty. Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> so Bryony is going to be talking us through some wonderful Japanese whiskeys. We're going to be exploring some Japanese whiskey today. And uh, yeah, Bryony works for a company called TS Global, who is, uh, we're lucky enough to have working with us here in British Columbia to bring in all manner of fantastic whiskeys, actually. I mean, I know you guys started off specifically with more of a Japanese uh, um it's more of a Japanese portfolio, but now we're branching out. We've got Phil Common. We've got all kinds of wonderful things that we'll be working with you on. And it's, you know, very exciting. As a fellow whiskey yes. nerd, I'm sure you're pretty excited about it too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so the way this is going to work is we're going to be talking about five different whiskeys. There are some people who are drinking along at home who are lucky enough to be part of some private clubs here in Victoria. And this is in, con uh, in collaboration with the Victoria Whiskey Festival 2021, the festival that technically didn't happen in its normal time and place over at the, the Grand Pacific Hotel there in January. But we're making it happen in your own living rooms, in our own hearts and minds. And we're carrying on the whiskey tradition and we're sharing some great whiskeys with the, uh, the great people of Victoria, B.C. And uh, we're going to start off today with, I believe, some Shinobu. What can you tell us about Shinobu, Bryony? All right. Well, the Shinobu brand is um, it's quite new in the market. And uh, the brand itself, the, the word Shinobu uh, literally means forbearance. And maybe this is where you can key up the definition on your screen. But basically, it means forbearance, uh, to be still, to be patient with, to basically to be with every kind of situation. So then uh, the, ver the, the warriors or ninjas, they're able to strike more precisely or you know, they're able to go you know, carry through these difficult uh, situations. So that's kind of the uh, name meaning. And why the, the whiskeys are named after Shinobu is because all the Shinobu are finished in a rare and expensive Japanese oak tree called Mizunara Oak. And Mizunar Oak has to be over 200 years old before it can make the barrel, simply because the tree doesn't grow straight. Uh, it grows wide, has a lot of nuts. So it's very difficult to find a straight piece for the barrel making. And another reason why the Mizunar Oak is expensive is because um, the once whiskey goes into barrel that's made by Mizunara, Oftentimes, the whiskey will escape from the barrel just because Mizu, the first uh, four character of the Mizunara oak, means water. And Mizunara oak simply means water oak. And once the, the oak tree is completely dry and treated, you'll find little pores uh, located uh, throughout the wood itself. So uh, the, the whiskey uh, escape from these little pores. And uh, on the flip side, on the good side is uh, whiskey has way more contact with the surface of these wood. And so the Mizunara oak are able to give whiskey a lot of its flavor really fast. And that's why the Shinobu uh, whiskey, uh, the, first one, the first one we're going to try are finished in one year. And the 10 year we're going to try next is finished in six years. Just because, um, like I said, uh, the whiskey are able to pick up a lot of flavor really fast. Um, the Shinobu came from um, uh, their, the company uh, just out to selling uh, its own whiskey. They finished building uh, last year during COVID um, and they have began their uh, the selling experiments. And we're likely to see uh, some of the single malt from them uh, maybe three, five years down the road. However, right now, all the Shinobu whiskey are what we call world mold blend. And so simply means they bring in all the whiskeys from around the world, uh, vet it in, in Japan, and then uh, finishing it in Mizunara Oak and then bottle it as is. So that is a little bit about a Shinobu. Do you have any questions, Adam? 
Uh, no, I, uh, I I think that was uh, very 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 clear. Thank you. That's, that's a great story. Awesome. Um, it's great. it's brought up an, 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 a a couple of interesting observations that I mean I I personally um, didn't know the actual word shinobu and what uh, what that meant, but it makes an awful lot of sense if you look at the uh, the packaging on the box for yes. the guys at home. It actually has mm-hmm. the oh you've got the big banner of course behind you um, <laughs> yes. has has the samurai on it um, and mm-hmm. the pose that he's striking looks like he's just he's just waiting he's just waiting for that right precise mo- moment when you see an opening and that's uh, that's right. That makes that yes. makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, and yeah, and it really it ties into the craftsmanship for for a lot of Japanese, right? The way they mm. how are they able to treat things? Actually, there is a term. Uh, that term is so shokuning. Shokuning mm. is what we call trades person, but they 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 take their trades into uh, the next level. They treat their trade for a lifetime career, and they only do one thing and they do it to the extreme excellence and so that's kind of um, the whole philosophy of the brand shinobu it, and it really does tie cool. into Japanese culture in general, like that whole sort of spirit of gambate, right? You just keep trying mm-hmm. until you get it perfect, and then you just, yeah, and it's yeah, yeah. Uh, and and so just speaking about the pure malt uh, thing as well, there, there's there's a lot of there's been a lot of confusion, and I think I think a lot of um, misinterpretation of pure malts. It's mm-hmm. it's a it's a phrase that you generally will find most pretty much only in Japanese whiskey. I'm not sure I've seen it anywhere else. And a lot of people mm-hmm. think that it's it's trying to be sneaky and trying to tell you. That it's trying to give the impression that it's a single malt when it's it's not pure malt is to put it in 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 uh, Scottish terms, it just means blended malt. That's that's all it that's means. Right. It, it mm-hmm. means it's malt whiskey. It's hundred percent malt whiskey from more than one distillery, and this whole concept of blending whiskey from multiple distilleries actually predates the idea of a single malt. So that was the entire purpose of having more than one distillery being built is because they realized that you could get much more depth and interesting flavor from blending the ingredients and the, the whiskeys together. Um, so mm-hmm. this is, it's not, they're not trying to be sneaky. They're not trying to trick you. I mean, I know there's a lot of things in the news right now about how Japanese whiskeys all of a sudden got these rules. And I, th- I think that's also an interesting thing as well, because it's being broadcast as if it's like um, the law in Japanese is changing and everything. No, it's just the, the association of Japanese distillers. That's it's right. Not, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you yeah. still have to be part of that to agree with it. And if you're not part of it, you don't have to stick to the rules. It's the same in Scotland. Um, but yeah, I mean, the idea of a, a pure malt whiskey, I, I hope that, um, uh, I really do hope that a lot of Japanese um, companies stick with that terminology because I, th- I think it's been around for long enough now that it deserves to be part of the whiskey lexicon. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I think it's a proud tradition of Japanese distillation uh, to, to do right. blending blended malts with uh, with with various different distillates, whether it's all from Japan or not. I mean, I do agree mm-hmm. that it should only be called you know Japanese whiskey if it's all made in Japan. But the idea of a pure malt, I hope that sticks around. I really do. Yeah. So so the new um, regulation that came out with this association, it's 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 great. I think Japanese whiskey industry is catching up to the world standard. And we are right in the midst of how middle of how the Japanese whiskey industry is evolving, right? Um, I think it's catching up to the standard of the world. And like you said, pure mole is uh, it's not a tricky thing. It's not a, a gimmick that the business person trying to trick you into buying it. It simply is, you know, the a lot of these whiskey, especially the ones that we're showcasing today, they're um, they're under a category of what we call G whiskey. Uh, mm-hmm. G means uh, regional or local. So these in our term in Canada would be like a craft whiskey. They don't make a lot of productions. Uh, they're trying to make and showcase and feature um, a boutique style of of whiskey. So uh, that's another thing. And what I was going to say is the the founder of Shinobu. Uh, the the whiskey maker he is actually uh, a beer maker as well he founded the first uh, Niigata beer company in 1997 in a place called Niigata which is a beautiful place they are famous for three things first is the you know the snow snow mountain uh, mountain on snow on the mountain sorry and uh, and second thing is they grow beautiful and delicious rice and third is you know with that combined they make beautiful and very famous uh, sake from this region. And so the, the founder of Shinobu, Mr. Ken Usami, he ha- he's a pioneer. You know, he's the first to open up a craft beer uh, distillery 
locally, and he started making beer. But at heart, he always had a passion and dream to to start distilling. And we all know um, whiskey business is not a quick cash game where you get to see your money right away. You got to wait three, five years or more to see your return on investment. So he had his beer game going at the same time. He's slowly and planning his whiskey business. So here we are. Um, he's you know finally building the Shinobu Distillery locally, and and uh, he's able to uh, able to you know uh, purchase a, a a little bit of the Michinara cast um, in Japan, and he he want to showcase this beautiful Oriental unique flavor that Michinara oak has to contribute. Cool. Um, yeah. Quick question on on the Shinobu uh, specifically. I'm sure. going to open the bottle while I ask it. Um, okay. Do you know where it's matured? Uh, is it actually matured in Niigata, where it's blended? Or yes, uh, it is uh, matured in Niigata in his uh, beer warehouse, actually. Oh, cool. So that's, that'll yeah. give a little bit of uh, regional province to it as well, because of course the maturation mm -hmm. side is very important for whiskey. And from from what I understand, Niigata is one of the uh, one of the one of the places, like uh, quite a lot of Japan, where the variation in temperature between summer and winter is actually quite dramatic. Uh, unlike That's Scotland, right. where it's only, you know, the weather in Scotland's only ever like 15 degrees away from the weather in Scotland, right? It, it's basically, it's always somewhere between zero and 15 throughout most of the mm -hmm. year. Um, whereas, uh, it's not quite that bad, but it can be. Uh, whereas in Japan, of course, it can fluctuate from below freezing to above, you know, 35 sometimes yeah. in some places. Um, so that will actually have a, a much more dramatic effect on the maturation of whiskey. So it's not just the fact that we're using here um, the Mizunara oak, which will um, impart more flavor in a shorter period of time, but also the, the differences in temperature is also going to make a I don't want to say rapidly aging whiskey because, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. actually make it age any quicker, but it does make it mature at a faster rate. And that's the difference yes. between age and maturity. You can sometimes have old whiskies that don't feel very mature, and you can sometimes have young whiskies that do. Um, age and maturity mm -hmm. aren't necessarily completely intertwined. They're a good indicator sometimes. but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And in terms that's of true. trying to get a, uh, a good, you know, a whiskey business going and trying to get a bit of a return on your investment, he, you know, must have had it must have felt like it hit the jackpot when he realized oh Mizunara oak it's perfect because it gives more sort of Japanese history and authenticity to the whiskey but it also means that I can you know put it in the bottle a little sooner it's a win-win situation yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, also on that note if you look at the Andrew share percent uh, rate um, mm -hmm. I believe it's five to eight percent Andrew share that's gone each year you know, oh, that's excellent. the text paid to the angels. <laughs> did, did, they ha did they have a phrase in Japanese for that, I wonder? Uh, it sounds like the kind of thing haikus have been written so. about. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I don't know the term for that, no. Uh, they might simply just say angel share and direct translate into that. Yeah, that would make yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. I, I do love sometimes when the, the Japanese translations of uh, a, a relatively you know modern or Western phenomenon come, come happen and they you know they just cram a few kanji together and it means something completely different. From memory, I think mm -hmm. uh, when they translated aeroplane, it just the kanji literally means jump go machine. I'm like, oh brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To the point it works. All righty, mm -hmm. I'm gonna pour pour myself a little dram of the Shinova Pure Malt. All right. I'm ready myself too. Mm. Oh, it's creamy. So it's a Mizunara mm -hmm. finish. Um, sorry if uh, mm -hmm. I'm making you repeat yourself here, because no, you know I I may have missed it in, uh, in in what you were just mentioning. Does this? Do we know what this was in originally? Yeah. So um, it is uh, about four year old bourbon cast whiskey, cool. but vetted with uh, four year old sherry cast nice. whiskey vetted together in Japan and um, finish in Mizunara oak for one year uh, awesome. together. Mm -hmm. Cool. So there was sort of so, the Mizunara oak kind of, uh, to, to borrow a term from, uh, uh, I think Compass Box likes to use this one. It's kind of the marrying cask in a sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And so um, I don't know if you're able to see the color um, please through the bottle. It's actually quite mm -hmm. creamy. Um, so that is a sign that is now non-chill filtered. Yeah, and I'm actually look at the 
I'm actually seeing in my bottle, I'm not sure if it's in yours, but I think um, being being sent through the mail, my bottle might have got a little bit cold because there's what's uh, what's known in, in the distilling industry as apparently irreversible fluck, uh, which is when some of the fatty esters actually um, sort of cling together so much that it becomes slightly visible. It looks ever so slightly sort of dusty almost through the through mm-hmm. the liquid. And that's some people get put off by that. For me, that's a fantastic sign because it means not only has it not been chill filtered, it means it is oily and thick and yeah, yeah. gorgeous. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also, um, sometimes it will have some ch- uh, charred ashes on the bottom of the uh, bottle. Oh, like that kind of nice. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, it also it's a sign that is um, a, a first filled charred virgin means not oak. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So, is there a waiting list for uh, for being able to get casks of uh, their their single malt when they're available, or? <laughs> Yeah, well, um, I think given that we have uh, done a you know wonderful job with Shinobu in BC, um, we're the fastest growing brand of Japanese whiskey in in Canada. So oh, wow. I, I've congratulations strongly. Thank you. I think we we will definitely get some sh- uh, single malt into Canada as as it is ready. Nice, and I know a lot of people mm-hmm. are going to be looking forward to that. Um, as much as I mean. I have to admit, I, I think I actually slightly have a preference towards blended malts, especially when value is taken into account. Um, but there are mm-hmm. a lot of single malt purists out there who are going to be like, oh, when's it coming? When's it coming? So that's that's very mm-hmm. good news. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, uh, I know they uh, they can't wait. I simply can't wait to see single malt myself. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I just absolutely love the, the different flavors of Mitsunara that it's being, you know, showcased mm-hmm. in the whiskey is. Um, I was so thirsty. I take the first sip. Um, you know, again, that uh, I, I want to say uh, Buddhist temple incense. You know, uh, if you've mm, ever been to yeah, a yeah. Buddhist temple, you know, there's incense burning. It's is that calming, that uh, comforting scent for me. Take, uh, taking okay, me back I, to Miyajima uh, Island, where I was once at the, mm-hmm. I was at, at one of the, the Shinto shrines in the Buddhist temple. Um, right. but also, a, a weird note, uh, it smells like kind of um, old wood, not not necessarily like fresh oak, but like old mm-hmm. oak that's, you know, been mm-hmm. around. And it's but specifically, as soon as I thought of Miyajima, when you were bringing up the uh, the temple, that um, it specifically reminded me of when I was looking at the world's largest rice spoon, which is on display on Miyajima Island. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow, okay. Mm. Nice. Had a weirdly like pungent oak smell. Yes, it does have that... Um... Like for me, this whiskey, uh, compared to the blended whiskey of our Shinobu, uh, this one is, I think, more catered for uh, an experienced or seasoned whiskey drinker. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a lot of complex- complexity of, of different spices and wood notes that Absolutely. I think a seasoned whiskey drinker might enjoy it more. I, I haven't gone in for a sip yet, but just on the nose, like the, the big thing that I'm getting, which is a, a really nice flavor or aroma to have on a whiskey, is... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I can't remember what it's called over here. In Ontario, I think it was Tiger Tail. I think it's Tiger Tiger here. The the ice cream that's sort of uh, it's like an orange sherbetty ice cream with a ripple of uh, licorice through it. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I'm getting that with a little bit of clove. the The marriage of the, like the three different cask types in this is is one of the reasons I love blended malts. To be honest, is as much as I mm-hmm. love sherry casks, as much as I I love first fill, as much as I love Mizunara, I think all of those things work better in harmony with with each other because you, you right, right. simply get more colors to paint with, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Nice. Yeah, I'm getting. Yeah, orange peel. Not so much the juice, but a little bit of orange peel. Peel, yeah, the yep. little bit bitter zest kind of mm-hmm. gelding. And cloves uh, and yeah, then that, that old wood. That's really good. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's very nice. Beautiful. Well, and I do the have percentage. Mm, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. No, please carry on. Um I, I was just mentioning uh it's forty three percent ABV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For for the caramel. Which is, you know, um, I know I myself have been on record many times to say that, um, you know, I like higher strength. I like cast strength when available. I love 46, 48. But 
to be really honest, it matches the style of whiskey quite well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't want this at 40, but I'm quite happy with it at 43. You can tell the viscosity and the oils in it are still there. And that's kind of the more yeah. important part. I'm not, I'm not necessarily worried about you taking the alcohol away. I'm worried about them taking the, 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 the flavors away. And the flavors are all kind of here still. It's, it makes me think that it's probably naturally relatively low ABV at cast strength. And it's not, although yes, it's only 43 now, it's not been quote unquote watered down as much as some, some whiskeys have. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, the bad news right now is that mm -hmm. uh, we are currently waiting for this to still arrive from the LDB. We've, we've got it ordered, but it's not currently at time of recording available on the web store. It might be available uh, by the time this airs, or it might be a little later. So um, check out strathlicker.com and search for Shinobu in the, in the search bar. And hopefully it will, it will pop up. If not, check back in a couple of weeks or keep your eye on your Dram Association emails because I will let you know. Um, but because we, we've actually not had this one in yet, we're bringing it in for the first time. I don't have a, an actual set price on it yet. Um, okay. But a rough estimate, it looks like it's going to be around 130 approximately uh, at full price on the shelf, which means with your 10% discount, which I will, uh, I will give to you guys when it arrives, and I'll send out an email so that you know don't don't feel left out. We're still going to feature this whiskey when it arrives. Um, you'll get it for 117 approximately with your 10% discount, which is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, great great deal. Awesome. There's not honestly, there's not many Scottish blended malts of this quality that you could get. So never mind the the added expense of it coming from Japan, which is always going to add expense. Let's face it, Japanese economy, we can't compete with it. Um, the dollar to yen doesn't make sense in a lot of ways. But if you want Japanese whiskey, you just have to kind of deal with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And also, um, I mentioned how expensive Mitsunar Oak is uh, compared to uh, other whiskey barrels. Uh, let me just put it on the dollar amount. Um, um, Unused meats in our oak is on the market for roughly around six thousand US dollars. Oh blimey! Uh, if you can get it, yeah. <laughs> and that's compared to you know share cast maybe a little bit more expensive, around six thousand. Uh, sorry, six hundred dollars. Yeah, and a bourbon yeah, probably two to three. If that's that. right. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So this yes. is like this is twenty times the price of a bourbon cask. That's right. At least, yeah. So, so it, otherwise, you know, it, it, it does reflect a little bit in, in the whiskey itself. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, and actually, uh, the whiskey maker of Shinobu, he actually, another uh, fun fact, he, he actually went out and purchased a land and he stopped planting his own, you know, Mizunar oak forest. Oh, nice. He's not going, going to see it and be mm -hmm. able to use it for in his lifetime, unfortunately, but he just want to give back to the nature, right? He knows yeah. that he has used, you know, so many uh, barrels and, you know, he wanted to preserve the nature a little bit as well. That makes absolute sense. And it's much, much like whiskey making, um, like it's, it's a, it's a gift to the future in a sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you, whiskey is a beautiful symbol of, uh, of optimism for me because you, you know, you might not be here by the time, uh, by the time it's ready to drink. Uh, hopefully mm -hmm. you will be in whiskey's case, but with a tree, you're definitely not going to be, but it's a gift to the, the future people, uh, whether That's it's your right. children or your friend's children or just whoever turns up to enjoy it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Nice. Beautiful. So we're going to move on now to the 10 year old. And before mm -hmm. I forget, um, I had an interesting, um, someone, someone mentioned once something about Mizunara Oak, which I've, I've not been able to confirm or deny. And, you know, you've obviously uh, researched Mizunara Oak a lot more than I have. And I was wondering okay. if, if you happen to know if this is true or not. And this ties back to the samurai that's on the, uh, on the Shinobu brand. I heard that back in the day, one of the uses for Mizunara oak before uh, being used obviously in whiskey casks was it was the wood that was used for, for um, uh, fletching, for making arrows for archery. Do you happen to know if that's true? Um, I, find I any information don't anywhere. know if that is true. Um, from my research and understanding, uh, Mizunara oak is used in a higher end expensive custom you know, furnitures. Oh, cool. That's, that's, that's for my research. Yeah. I'll look into that a little bit more and confirm that with you. Nice. But it will, it will be really cool to see if it's actually used in, in weapons. In yeah. Country. Cause yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think that would be a fantastic special edition of the Shinobu, you know, have the guy instead of with a sword, with a bow ready, like, waiting, <laughs> waiting ball, for the yes. perfect thing. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Now the Shinobu. That reminds me. Mm. Sorry. That mm. reminds me. I actually, if there's any uh, Star Wars fan out there, I actually photoshopped the lightsaber. 
<laughs> on to <laughs> the Warriors hand, I thought it was pretty fun, and I posted it on um, on July the fourth. Oh, sorry, May the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Uh, well, you're gonna have to do because uh, 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 we've got May the fourth coming up Audrey. again this year. Of course, you you'll, you'll have to do one with um, the the I can't remember the best bar or whatever it is the the uh, the the, spe- the spear the Mandalorian has. I think that's your challenge for this year. Okay, all right, challenge accepted. <laughs> or, or just actually put a Mandalorian helmet over the guy. That's perfect. There you go. Yes, <laughs> I think I can do that. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Shinobu Ten. Um, this is the one mm-hmm. from the whole lineup. This is the one I'm most familiar with. Um, I, I've presented okay. this before. I've enjoyed this one before. I think it's a fantastic whiskey. Unfortunately, apparently, I think it's. Um, I I <laughs> I may have oversold it a little bit in the past because we're currently out of stock. Uh, we had some a couple of days ago, and now it's just oh. randomly disappeared. So this one will also be back on our shelves soon. <laughs> Nice. Uh, so hopefully uh, it might be back in time for the video airing. If not, again, please just you know just check back on our uh, website in a, in a week or two, or keep an eye on your email. I'll let you guys know when it's back in stock. But yes, this is one that's it's not going anywhere. We, we're keeping hold of this guy. I'm a big fan of the ten year old. But let's revisit it yes. now together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, ten year is my favorite in the Shinobu lineup. Cool. Uh, we we do have a fifteen year old, and I I think ten year old is just just perfect, just balanced and mm-hmm. delicious. And- ready for every everyday drinking yeah i think one of the reasons i really like the 10 year old i mean especially compared to the 15 actually to be brutally honest is it's just incredible mm-hmm. value for money for what it is like there's not yeah, many 10 year old japanese whiskeys be, be they pure malt single malt single grain or, or whatever that you can get for this kind of price um mm-hmm. so what it, it has actually gone up ever so slightly since the last time we ordered it but even then it's still a great value um It'll be back in at 17122, which means that the uh, the sale price will be 154.10. So yeah, keep an eye on your email if you're wanting to pick up a bottle of this at the 10% off. Um, we'll make it available to all Dram Association members. Mm-hmm. Mm. So this one you said was um, a blend of eight-year-olds, then matured for two years in Mizunaro. Is that correct? No, it's actually um, at least 10-year-old bourbon and sherry again um, oh, wow. vetted together and then six months only in meets marrow oh okay sorry my apologies mm-hmm. cool. that's nice. okay yeah and as you can see the colors are way darker than than the uh, pure mold mm-hmm. nice amber orange glow which with, uh, with less of a uh, Mizunara finish makes me think that possibly that would mean a higher percentage of sherry cask but yes, I think so too. Uh, and it's actually a lot, not a lot, but a little bit more fruitier and, and sweeter on, on, the, on, the, on the taste, mm-hmm. mouthfeel. I, I actually had, uh, before I pour myself a, a thing of this, I, I know uh, a lot of our longtime viewers and, uh, and, and whiskey fans really enjoy the, the, the moment of the, the pop. I keep saying pop cock, cork pop, and you know it sounds nice on a microphone, and I pull funny faces. Um, I, I've gone on record previously say I think the Shinobu Ten might well be my favorite uh, whiskey without a cork. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, this is this uh, this actually came up the other day, and a, a, a cus- an audience of mine asked me why. Um, a lot of Japanese was used uh, screw top rather than a quart top. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, if you, you know the story behind no, it. No, I don't actually. Uh, all right. So, you know, cork tree are not growing on Japan. Mm. And so uh, for them to import into Japan and use it, it's another extra cost, right? Yeah. And second thing is, um, you know, Given the art uh, craftsmanship in, that goes into individual whiskey already, uh, cork is an organic uh, thing. It has sometimes bacteria or uh, other types of yeast that can ruin, and the cork may um, gone bad, and that therefore, you know, maybe ruin a good bottle of whiskey. So that's another mm-hmm. reason that they don't like to use cork top, uh, and they prefer um, screw top. That, that makes an awful lot of sense. I was um, I can't, some I can't remember who I was talking with. I think it was Jay Wheelock actually. Yes, it was. So it was Jay, Jay Wheelock who uh, sadly mm-hmm. passed away last year. But he was a huge fan mm. of Japanese whiskey and Japanese culture as well. Spent a lot of time over there. Um, and I remember we were sat in uh, I think it was Big Bad John's maybe um, talking about Japanese culture uh, over time. And uh, mm-hmm. 
and we, we we came up this this idea that's like it, I hadn't really thought about it before um but it's it's Japanese sort of art especially and I would class whiskey making as a Japanese art in Japan um to to those who aren't who who aren't aware that it is art which will sometimes come across as scientific because they're very much um that, as we were mentioning before they're very much gambate try 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 again mm -hmm. it's iterative mm -hmm. design uh, which is you see much more in, in in science usually rather than art uh, they will just keep going and keep doing it until it's almost you know perfected um that is the beautiful thing about um about that culture and uh, yeah i mean if, if you if you think about optimization and, and there's a more scientific approach to a bottle closure yeah a screw top is a hell of a lot better than a cork um it's mm -hmm. been optimized <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I, again, it just miss out on the on the beautiful sound when you pop a cork top. You know, that, <laughs> other than that, I think it's yeah. I, right, we'll I just uh, no complain over it. <laughs> oh, that was awful. Hang on. There we go. There you go. You can make it yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I will I, I will trade in um, the, uh, the the cork sound for uh, for. You know, mm -hmm. slightly cheaper, quality. good quality Japanese whiskey any day. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I love the nose on this. It's it's really. Mm -hmm. I get this sort of um, like a cinnamon, like like cinnamon, but without the spice. It's got the the rich, like a more rich depth cinnamon, almost. Yeah. Almost more like a. If cinnamon and paprika were somehow weirdly mixed together, right? You've got the the rich mm -hmm. earthiness of like a smoked paprika, but it's coming across as more of a cinnamon sort of aroma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. Uh, definitely a lot more on the uh, spice notes, um, and, and almost like a toasted, not a toasted, but like like for me, it has like almost a cigarette kind of uh, smoky yeah uh, scent in there it reminds me of a cocktail i once had that was um served in um half a coconut shell that had been toasted really heavily it was like a charred coconut that was used as the, mm -hmm. the bowl for it, it reminds mm -hmm. me a lot of that actually mm -hmm. mm. yeah yeah I, I love this whiskey i feel really bad that it's probably not available technically as uh, as we speak but it will be back it will be back pretty soon the ldb's mm -hmm. uh, just just did a, a, a did uh, done a whole um, inventory of their entire warehouse we're going to give them a little bit of time to catch up again <laughs> they're a little slow yeah. right now you got to be patient with them <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> otherwise i might not send you any whiskey at all and that's just no good <laughs> yes yeah mm. um and also uh, i want to mention um you know how sometimes I don't know who taught me this, but uh, when I just getting into the whiskey world, uh, a, a senpai of my senpai is a term for uh, like a senior or mm -hmm. um, someone who's been this uh, or a master, if you may. But yeah, uh, this this senpai uh, show me uh, by dropping one or two drop of um, you know peated or Eiley whiskey, rub it dry. And then smell it, uh, the feeling of how soul warming it is. Mm -hmm. This Shinobu 10 is my favorite to do that. Ah. Just, you know, the scent of it, it's almost like a perfume for me. Like, it, it, you know, it, I, I love the scent of it. Doing that right now. Me. It was actually, yeah. uh, I, I could consider him my own senpai. Uh, Lawrence Graham, one of the organizers of the Whiskey Festival, was the guy who taught me to do this as well. Uh huh. Lawrence, I just, yeah. I just love how every time I do it, the first thing that comes to mind whenever I do it with a malted whiskey is Maltesers. Mm -hmm. I, I can't escape the smell of Maltesers. <laughs> mm, yeah. I wonder why they don't do uh, prime market whiskey as like a, an aftershave alternative. I could I could stick this on my head after a shave. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's our uh, new business venture. Right? Yeah, just package it in tiny little weird glass bottles, charge four times the yeah. price, and happy days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I think we're onto something here. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. So this seems like the natural break because uh, this is the end of our uh, little exploration of Shinobu today before we move on to the Kujira. Uh, this seems like a perfect natural break to, uh, to do something that we've been doing with all of these videos so far. And that is shine the spotlight away from the whiskey for a second and on the presenter. So uh, I'm sorry if this mm -hmm. is coming as a surprise to you, but That's we want to okay. know a couple of things about you. So I've got two questions sure. for you. Um, okay. And you're allowed to say no if you want, but we will, we, we will get, you will get hate mail um, if, if you say no to these. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so first question, 
outside yeah. of your own portfolio. So nothing that TS Global um, represents to make it to make it fair and to not get you okay. in trouble. Outside of yeah. your own portfolio, do you have a favorite distillery or blender or brand of whiskey? Um, well, I just mentioned I was just talking to my friend last night actually. Um, I think my for the longest time my, my favorite is Glamorangi just because I love the sherry cast and I, I didn't mm-hmm. like uh, so much on the peat uh, before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would have to say now I am really into Isle whiskey, Swisher, Arbag. I think the the five year old Wee Beastie is fantastic. <laughs> I- I love how both of the ones you've mentioned are owned by the same company. I think uh, Charlton Char- Char- Hobbs have become like... <laughs> Ooh, maybe they should. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, that'd be great also... news for another uh, another friend of mine, um, uh, Whiskey Bri, right. uh, Brian, who's yes. you know represents both of them in Canada. He'll be very happy to hear that. And that's the reason yeah. we ask this is about, you know, whiskey is not just a drink. It's not just a hobby. It's a community. And that mm-hmm. is true not just with the fans, but also with the people that work in the whiskey industry. And the festival... Um, one of the many things that we missed out on with not having the festival this year is an opportunity for all the um, the reps and the brand ambassadors to get together and hang out and you know that's exchange right. stories. Yeah. So that's the reason we ask these kind that. of questions as well, right? Mm-hmm. So the other question yeah. then is, okay. uh, how did you get into whiskey? What, what's your own whiskey journey? How did you get here? Hmm. Well, I think your audience is going to love this. Um, <laughs> so I'm born and raised in Taiwan and I came to Canada for high school uh, in a place called Shanagan Lake. I didn't go to the yeah. big, fancy, you know, private school, Shanagan Lake. I went to a smaller school, which is right beside it. Uh, it's called Maxwell. So it is on the island and, you know, just probably half an hour drive from Duncan. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I went there for high school. And after high school, I moved to Victoria for my college. I actually went to Camosun for a couple of years. Oh, cool. And during that time, I started working for... Uh, I would say a nightclub, a bar during the day. Uh, it's called V Lounge, which is on Douglas Street in Victoria. Um, so that's kind of the the gateway for me to get into the world of spirits, wine, and 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 all that. And uh, at the same time, uh, I started working uh, at a liquor store besides it. So cool. that's kind of where I really immerse myself in in the world. And then I start going to uh, IBSA, which is a, a mm-hmm. tasting event uh, in, you know, in Western Canada. Yeah, in- International and Vintage and Spiritus Association, I believe, isn't it? That's right. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how I get to learn many different products through around the world. And uh, when, you know, when I was working in the bar, you know, uh, my drink was crown and ginger, mm. right? So that's kind of how I started into uh, the with drinking whiskey. At first it was highball. And then I started into, you know, drinking neat whiskey. And then I found scotch whiskey (laughs) and then Japanese whiskey. And that's kind of my journey. Nice. So, Good yeah. exploration. I, I love that you're working on a uh, uh, in a liquor store on Douglas Street. I feel I feel a, a special bond with you now. That's right. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're <laughs> although it's the opposite direction, but you know, I <laughs> I you know I love coming to Victoria and visit you and everybody on the island. I feel I'm coming home because really Victoria or the island, it's it's second home to me. Nice. Uh, I would. Go should you ever move back and, here, we'd welcome you back with open arms. <laughs> Awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. So we're next up, uh, as, as I mentioned with the Shinobus, I'm a huge fan of uh, what in Scotland they would call the blended malts. Um, the, the idea of taking single malt whiskey from multiple distilleries and blending it together to get a, a much more uh, rich um, flavor profile with more variety of flavors. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of grain whiskey. I think it's a mm. it's it's an entire category, especially in in Scot- in Scottish whiskey, um, that often gets forgotten about. And we've had um, as, even on this show in the last year some absolutely wonderful um, Scottish grain whiskies, uh, even blended grain whiskies now as well, much like blended malts. Um, something that Compass Box has been doing, and hopefully we'll be having um, uh, the one of the blenders of Compass Box joining us on this show uh, in the coming weeks as well. Um, grain whiskey, from for those in the know, is no worse than malt whiskey it's just different and you have to treat it differently and treat it if you treat whiskey if you treat grain whiskey right it will treat you right back with a a beautiful beautiful experience and Mm -hmm. looking forward to here because we have i believe three different three grain whiskeys next do we not 
That's right. We have the everything is from Kujira, uh, the brand Kujira, and everything is um, you know, like you mentioned, it's single grain, so it's only from one grain, one distillery, and this special grain that we um, that we all know, but we're not from there. It uh, usually in the whiskey well, and that is rice, yeah, and, mm. and so that's what the grain that's used in these whiskey. I, I had someone um, uh, be shocked when I told them about uh, the fact that these were made of rice. Once it's like they can't make it with rice. That's not a grain. I was like, <laughs> it's literally called a grain of rice. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I know uh, a lot of people are, are surprised and taken back by you know a whiskey could be made from rice, and uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong uh, with rice being in the whiskey. Uh, although the process of uh, working with with rice is a little bit different than other grains, mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, I'll jump right into it. Um, when you're working with rice, especially in Japanese culture, uh, there's this thing called koji. So koji is essentially a type of mold that basically breaks down the starch in the rice into sugar. And then the yeast can, can then can come in and do, do the job and, and, and convert it to alcohol. Um, so uh, the process of koji is essential um, in, in, in working with rice. Mm-hmm. However, the line of uh, kujira, um, well, first of all, these are all uh, collective of whiskey from different small distillery on Okinawa Islands. Mm-hmm. If you look on the map, Okinawa is a small group of island, um, probably six, seven uh, islands, uh, very southern part of Japan. It's kind of Hawaii of Japan. People love to go there, tropical weather. Um, people go there for vacation. And uh, it's, you know, um, and locally, uh, they used to make this uh, rice-based spirit called awamoli as a novelty item. And this dates back almost five, 600 years ago in the times of Yuku Kingdom. And mm. so um, they, during that time, it's, you know, that's what they uh, would do as a novelty item to give to, you know, the Qing dynasty back then and the surrounding empires. And so um, about, I would say, almost 30 years ago, or even longer than that, uh, more than 30 years ago, I think it was uh, in the late 1980s. Um, a, a few small distilleries on on the on the islands, um, they start experimenting uh, aging awamoli in whiskey barrels, and that's kind of how these whiskey get to come about. Is that they kind of inherited their their uh, method of productions and with rice spirits, and merge it and 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 with the style or in production of whiskey, and then. This is a new trend of, of whiskey, and we call it Yuku whiskey, actually. Cool. So mm-hmm. to, to try and uh, transpose uh, some of that into, uh, into words specifically for uh, the more Scotch-centric whiskey lovers, uh, Kujira is, is not a distillery. It is, uh, it, it is actually an independent bottler of single-grain whiskeys from a specific region. How's that? <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> Beautifully said. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nice, yes. and we love independent bottlers here on uh, on drinking mm-hmm. out loud. Beautiful, and they're actually they're the, the you know maybe I call it a brand, but you know you call it independent bottler. Mm-hmm. These are collectively owned by these small distilleries on the islands. Oh, so it's kind of a um, like a cooperative they, of, of them all. They yeah, actually yeah, together it's, own it's the brand. Co-op- that's oh, right. Oh, so yeah. it's not it's not technically an independent bottler. You're, yeah, it's it's something I don't yeah. think really exists exists in, in, in Scotland. In yeah. The <laughs> yeah. Huh. And so, you know, they're they're all very small and you know, back in the Duku Kingdom, there's only a select few, I think there's six or seven, has the permit to make our moly. And oh, so wow. these are these all being around for, you know, a lot a lot a long time. Mm. And um and they're small because they again they're small islands with small productions. And so they kind of showcase they want people to get to know them a little bit and that's you know there's one way for us to 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 get to see what's coming out from okinawa islands nice is through these uh, single grain whiskey it's it's certainly yeah. one part of japan that i haven't yet visited 
that I really would quite like to, because Okinawa, it's, it seems to have a, its own culture as well. It's somewhat separate from the rest of Japan, in a sense. It, it, mm -hmm. it feels like um, the Japanese equivalent of the of Newfoundland, almost. <laughs> yes, if you put it that way, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. All right, let's, uh, let's then, check out the five-year-old yeah. first, shall we? Okay, all right. What's the story behind the whale? I think it's a whale. It is a whale, yeah. Yes, it is a humpback whale. Um, so whales are uh, their guardian angel of the Okinawa people. Oof. And so, uh, and that's what the Kajurm term means. It is, simply means whale. Nice. Mm -hmm. that, that would make mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. So the five-year-old um, is finished in the white oak version oak, first fill. Oh, cool. For, uh, for five years. Yeah, so the color are quite dark compared to you know bourbon cast. Mm. And amazing things can happen when you mature grain whiskies, especially in uh, in virgin white oak. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. something that you can see not only in American culture. I mean, of course, bourbon is a prime example of that. It's a it's a it's a non malt whiskey that's matured always in a virgin American or virgin white oak. Uh, but also much mm -hmm. more locally to home. Um, I, I think straight off of um, the the ancient grains, uh, which is made by Divine right here on the island, which keeps mm -hmm. on winning awards and awards and awards. Even though technically it's not even a whiskey, it's only about a year and a bit old um the mm -hmm. the amount of flavor you can get out of that virgin white oak if it's treated in a specific way is absolutely fantastic and it often goes incredibly well with uh, the characteristics of a grain whiskey mm -hmm. yeah i actually um love white virgin oak as well mm. um i i just you know it does not have that uh too much of the fruitiness from sherry oak i can really taste the wood itself, yeah, and I think it's beautiful. Yeah. I just want to mention the presentation of this uh, of this bottle as well. Um, I absolutely love the fact that it's such a traditional um, whiskey style shape of bottle. You know, it's got the, the bulge in the neck, which is you know, generally it, it was apparently designed to uh, to mimic the uh, the neck of the still, right, where it bulges That's out. That's right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But it's got a screw top. I love it. It's like this beautiful <laughs> thing of like tradition mixed with uh, mixed with screw top. functionality. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna. I know uh, it's not quite the same, but this is the kind of screw top that's got the little, uh, you know, the separate ring that will separate. So it won't be a, a, a cork pot. But let's see if this is satisfying. Ah. <laughs> oh, that'll do. <laughs> yes. And I love that cork, cork, cork sound. Oh, the, the glug, the pop and glug, it's the, yeah. I, I feel like I'm trying to like score a, like a Olympic diving or something when I'm doing that. You know, I'll give yeah. it a five for a pop and a three and a half for the glug. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's an interesting nose. Is this your first time? I think it is my first time for the five, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I, so, I think back when you last visited, when when we when we dragged you in and got you on the sofa for the uh, studio sample sessions, um, I, I think the five wasn't yet in the province. I think it was only in Alberta. Yes, um, we yeah we had the eight year old and the twenty year for the longest time, and then the five and ten year came in um, mm -hmm. last year, late last year, and then the twelve came in as a limited quantity. There's only, I think, 20 cases for BC, which cool. is 120 bottles, which, yeah, it's a very limited. So this is a particularly weird note on, I'm getting on the nose. And um, mm -hmm. forgive me, I don't mean to speak ill of the whiskey in any way. This is a note that I personally very much enjoy and might put some people off. It's very slightly mushroomy. Um, I'm right. getting specifically enoki mushrooms, you know, the long white ones that you sometimes see floating in your miso soup. Mm -hmm. ah. So, yeah, um, that. Very, very uh, good notes on that. And, and I think a lot of people might have turned, heard the term uh, umami. Yes. And again, I don't want it to be like a Japanese <laughs> <laughs> a language class, but umami is a term for, um, a, you know, Japanese called it the six flavor profile. Mm -hmm. um, it, it literally translates to fresh taste or... Um, uh, bright taste. Uh, so you can find everything. You can find umami in everything in Japanese cuisine. You can find it in miso soup, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. soya sauce, 
Uh, you can find it in um, even their uh, sashimis. You know, this is a flavor that Japanese strive for. And, uh, and I just yeah, want to actually um, uh, mention umami. I think it's a fantastic flavor profile. And uh, mm -hmm. there's there's one thing as well with umami is um, that it sometimes gets a bit of a bad name because a lot of people equate umami with MSG, which uh, that's that's a whole other topic that uh, has a lot of uh, unfortunate racial un undertones that there's nothing technically wrong with MSG. Some people can be allergic to it, yes, but MSG in itself yes. will not hurt you. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's ridiculous that they try to put that out there that it does. It's it literally derived from seaweed. Uh, if you can eat mm -hmm. seaweed, you can have MSG. Pretty much as simple as that. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very integral part of not just Japan, but a lot of uh, Asian cuisine culture. And it's true things, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah, mm -hmm. I, I definitely do find it on the nose of this whiskey. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, why where this is coming from is I, I believe it's uh, in the koji that Kujira uses um, mm. on the islands. There's a unique style or unique species or mold. Uh, they call it the black koji. Mm -hmm. And as a result of using black koji, the end product will have a little bit more of these umami flavor, um, a little bit more complex, a little bit more earthy and mushroomy, if you may, mm -hmm. uh, compared to the white or yellow koji, which is often used in sake production as well as shoju productions cool mm -hmm. that's I, i'm learning this is wonderfully in depth thank you you're you're an expert i like it <laughs> thank you yeah and i i absolutely love it uh, now <laughs> although i have to say when i first tasted the uh, kujira eight year old uh, I, I i i'm pretty sure you have it in your store as well uh the first mm -hmm. time my experience with this rice whiskey with uh with kujira I did not like it and i think you mentioned it per uh perfectly before i was coming with a mind of single mold whiskey mm -hmm. and so i was looking for the profile of single mold and i did not find it and i felt it was nah but then i kind of read my mind around it's like well wait a second this is rice whiskey i need to kind of let go of what was there for me for single mold yeah. and then start from nothing and so that's why I really get to fall in love with these. There's unique flavor, like you mentioned, umamis. Um, sometimes the nose would come up with uh, a little bit of like almost acetone or alcohol, um, like glue kind of nose. But, you know, it's very unique and interesting. Mm -hmm. And and I think the five and 10 year with the virgin oak is just done beautifully delicious. Yeah. It's and I have That's to so admit, I, I, we did have the eight. Um, we stopped carrying yes. it because I intend to swap it out with, with the five. That was, that was kind of mm -hmm. the plan for a while. We you know, limited shelf space. Um, yes. And I, I much prefer the nose of the five over the eight. I mean, I, I didn't, I, uh, I liked the eight, especially uh, much more so on the palate than the nose, but the nose is incredibly inviting on number five. And I think, mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, I think one of the things that um, needs to be specifically pointed out the difference between this and a lot of grain whiskies is one thing that's um that a lot of especially with scottish grain whiskey people will decry the fact that it's not as complex as a single malt and you're quite right especially chemically it's just doesn't have as many different flavor profiles and it's not as deep um but there's something about the the process of uh, when you're when you're making it with the koji rather than just you know it's it's not just a small amount of malted barley thrown in with the rest of the grains to make it ferment it's a completely different fermentation process a completely different um mash that this is being distilled from and it mm -hmm. is it does have so many unique different interesting flavors i would say this is just as complex as a single malt it's just a different spectrum of flavors than a single malt that's right absolutely absolutely yeah. and i think i think rice whiskey has has you know i think it's got a, a big future ahead of it to be brutally honest I, I think it's one of those things you know rice is such a a mass cultivated grain around the world as soon as people realize that you can you can store mm -hmm. it in this way because that's you know that's how mm -hmm. whiskey started it was just a way of storing the energy from from grains that will last throughout grain. the winter um that's mm -hmm. the exact purpose of it and you could do exactly that with the vast amount of rice that's available in the world and make some really interesting stuff I think that's the reason bourbon got so popular is simply because there was a lot of corn around well that's right there's, there's, yeah. here's a clue distillers there's a shit ton of rice in the world <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm surprised well, i haven't seen it in places like australia actually as well because that's uh mm -hmm. 
it, it doesn't sound right, um, but trust me on this, Australia actually grows an awful lot of rice, especially for a lot of the, the really small um, sort of micro uh, Polynesian countries that uh, um, don't really have the space to grow rice. Um, ex mm -hmm. Australia exports a crap ton of rice, um, mostly mm -hmm. in the sort of the hotter, wetter areas on the, the north, uh, the northeast coast there. You wouldn't see it in the in the middle of the country. It's not too dry, obviously. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, it's. I'm surprised that I'm not seeing Australian distillers try rice whiskey. I, maybe maybe they are, and I have, just haven't seen it yet. But yeah, maybe. And I I think that what the, what they don't have and lack is the the knowledge of mm. you know working with rice and spirits and and. I think that's why. And that's exactly what you're getting with the Kujira brand, right? You're getting hundreds of years of experience and history in how to deal with rice as a grain. Because, yeah, I mean, as I say, rice is everywhere, but the ability to turn rice into this is only in one place in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All we need is more people to, uh, to, to leave Ryukyu and spread the, spread the good word and train people. <laughs> that, that's the problem. Ryukyu is just too nice. People don't want to leave. <laughs> It is. It is beautiful and relaxing place, and they have a huge drinking culture. Um, you can see people just, you know, having a little bit too much and pass on the street, and they wouldn't get sick just because it's nice tropical weather, you mm -hmm. know. And everybody seems to know everybody else, so it hasn't been. Yeah, it has been their culture there for a little bit. So, so going on on the palate there, I just took a sip. Um, I'm getting something that I so very rarely get in single malt, but I think it's a really interesting character. Uh, and I'm still yet to find the, the perfect way to describe it. But the closest I can get is to the slight sort of renity flavor you get in sort of hard, well-aged cheddars. So it's not cheesy at all, but it's got that sort of, sort of, sort of like, you know, when you get the little crystals sometimes in the cheese, it's like that bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, for me, it has a little bit of that grainy, flavors that sometimes i get in in the bourbon as well mm -hmm. um yeah so it's definitely there and definitely the caramel sweet and also had maybe it's because uh they they aged the whiskey uh on the island uh it has a hint of sea salt there for me as well maybe it's mm. the umami as well yeah uh, and, so, and it's one of those things yeah. that i'm so used to in cuisine that umami is always paired with salt you know you know miso mm -hmm. is a little bit salty you know Every, everything like that is. I didn't even notice that, yeah, of course the salt is there too, um, which is most yeah. likely from the maturation site. So I assume it's all matured on, on the island as well. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, and so it's it's like for me, yeah, like sometimes I, I like to imagine it is the salted caramel of whiskey, mm -hmm. you know? And nice. um, another thing with the, with our Kujira, and I'm really proud is, is it is actually so easy to pair with food. Mm. yeah i can see you that know. yeah it's so easy uh the kutura it's smooth it doesn't have too much on the on the heat of the alcohol um you can have this with almost just everything you know yep. and japanese they have uh if you go to izakaya bars um i think you have one on the islands called nubu mm -hmm. yeah nubu, nubu kitchen yeah. or sake bar yeah um, you know, if you order the um, izakaya dish, um, barbecue or skewered, uh, this will go really, really well with those dishes. Mm. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it is one of those things that could really go with an awful lot of different food, and it, it also doesn't have to be Japanese food. The first thing that came to mind for me of what would go this would go really well mm. with just a pork chop and apple sauce, right? Mm. Pork chop, mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. apple sauce, and this whiskey. I'm I'm happy. Yeah, I'm a very happy man. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So yeah, uh, this one, again, um, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself here. Honestly, the next two we do actually physically have in the store. We are still waiting on our delivery of this one. Hopefully it will arrive pretty soon. Um, we're looking approximately, it's going to be around 145, which means after your uh, after your 10% discount, it's going to be around 130. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for the Kujira five-year-old. That will be coming to the Strath very, very soon. Awesome. Lovely. And you mentioned the eight-year-old, you don't have it, right? You have to list it in your store. Uh, yeah, we All just right. sold the last bottle a couple of weeks ago, I think. Well, congratulations to last the person whoever buys their eight year old. It <laughs> right. is now a collective items. Um, the Kudra eight year old they, is is discontinued. They don't make oh, it. Oh, interesting. Cool. Yeah. So ah, I feel bad I didn't yeah. pick up another case. Oh well. 
<laughs> <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do something bold and exciting right here, right now. We're gonna we're gonna take this whiskey and we're just gonna double the age. That's exactly what we're gonna do right here. Exactly. We're gonna go for the ten year old. Now you were mentioning, mm -hmm. of course, that these are from a series of different distilleries. I I'm gonna go out there and go on a limb here that because this is the same bottle shape and size as the five year old, is it the same distillery? It is the same distillery, and the distillery name is called Masahiro Distillery. Cool. And they actually uh, make a craft gin that's on the market as well, and they simply call it Masahiro Okinawa Gin. Oh, and is that the one in the blue the, bottle? That's right. And so we, we've shape, had that. Uh, similar, you do have that. Yeah, we, we, we had that on, in our gin club last year, actually. It was absolutely delicious. I didn't realize it yes. was the same distillery. That's really cool. So it is the same distilleries. And uh, as you can imagine, um, what goes in that gin, sorry, we went off track a little bit. Uh, the base <laughs> spirit it also comes from rice as well in Okinawa cool. gin. So yeah. Uh, so both the five-year and 10-year-old are coming from Masahiro. And this distillery has been family run since 1883. Mm -hmm. And the founder of Masahiro it was the chef for the uh, Ryukyu uh, M uh, kingdom back back in the days. Oh, wow. And so he was granted a uh, distilling license and he was able to open up shop and um, make awamoli back then. And so now his, uh, I think he was either a grandson uh, is now, he's innovative. He's like to try different things. That's why he released a couple of gins on the market. They still make beautiful awamoli. The Omali um, from uh, Masahiro, unfortunately, is not sold in BC just because of tax reg regulation. We're not allowed to bring that in, but it, you can actually find it in Alberta market uh, if you're over there. And also now they have their um, whiskey, single grain whiskey, Kajira, five year old and 10 year old from Masahiro. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's super cool. Mm -hmm. Masahiro Shizo. Yeah, yeah. Yes, cool. Masahiro Shizo. Shizo means distillery or, or simply um, a place to make spirits. That's mm -hmm. what Shizo means. You can see it in a lot of places. And uh, I was just looking up what else. Um, yeah. It's cool. Mom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this one up. Perfect. I uh, I also I, I I can't believe I didn't really notice this before, but the background is actually quite uh, quite interesting and different. I'll just put the two boxes side by side for uh, the viewers here as I'm talking. Um, I really like how the the five year old has kind of got this sort of northern lights thing going on, and then the ten year old mm -hmm. it's all of a sudden snowing. Um, I like that the the whales in a different atmosphere. Yeah, it, it almost look like they're either you know flying in the sky too. Like yeah, both the whales are the sky whaling. whaling. That, that sounds like some. That some sounds like something incredibly Japanese, isn't it? The sky whale. Sky whale. There's, I'm well, sure I, there's I, animes about that. <laughs> yeah, I actually call the Kujira the the whale in the whiskey world, uh, just because it's so unique, revolution, and um, yeah, it's so different than any other whiskey that's been out there. Mm -hmm. There's so much more oak influence going in on this one. I know that sounds obvious because it's got five years more under its belt, but yeah, that's got a lot of um, sort of, um, yeah, the, the, the caramel and sandalwood kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, the five year is definitely, um, I, I don't want to say lighter, but it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely sweeter almost if you compare side by side. And then the 10 year old, like you said, has a, a little bit more of the wood presence uh, influence. Yeah, but it's again, it's absolutely delicious. It it has that complexity that a lot of people might like in the whiskey. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting as well. I mean, a lot of people from a from a Scotch perspective will often think that younger whiskey is going to make it much more sort of you know feisty and sometimes a bigger flavor um, and less refined. I would almost almost say it's the opposite here. It's more more like an American whiskey where the the younger whiskey is actually a little bit more lighter and more approachable and, you know, a little bit more floral maybe. Whereas this one has mm -hmm. then just got, you know, it's just got a big wooden hammer of flavor smacking you in the face. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the, I'm really happy uh, to see the five and 10 year old that's going to be around. It's going to be our core range product going forward. 
Nice. And yeah, I think it's uh, very well put together and uh, well, yeah, I'm ready to show it to more people mm -hmm. in Canada. So yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of the the Kajira lineup. It, it has to be said, um, but I will be bluntly honest here, and I please don't take offense at this. I, I don't I don't mean it in a bad way. If you are brand new to whiskey and you're only you've, you've got maybe one whiskey in your collection, and you're looking for a second. Don't get these. These these are not for you. These are much too interesting and unique. And it, this is the kind of whiskey that. Uh, is is designed for people who are going on an adventure and exploration, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and I don't mean to, you know. Obviously, if you only have one bottle of whiskey and you want to buy this, please do so. I'm 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 semi joking, um, but this is much more a style of whiskey that is, it's it's not there. It's not there just to be a drink, right? It, it's mm -hmm. not. It's not. I mean, if you were if you were treating this literally just as a drink. To be brutally honest, the value isn't there. I mean, this is um, a fantastic, fantastic whiskey, and the value, once you know the story and the origin and the history and everything behind it, is fantastic. But as a drink on its own, it, it it's you don't get the full experience. You need to mm -hmm. go in and do the research and you know watch videos like this to understand where it's coming from um, and understand the rich history of uh, of this style of whiskey and how it's evolved from uh, from uh, various other uh, means. Uh, but yeah, once once you actually go in and experience the whole whiskey, not just the drink, um, this is you know, this is great stuff and really quite good value as well. Once you take into account the fact that Japanese whiskey is always right now going to have a premium because um, it just does. That's that's the way the world works. And if you want to explore Japanese whiskey, you're going to have to cough up a little more money. And that's, you know, it's worth it. Honestly, it is. <laughs> Again, not worth it just for the drink's sake. Um, if you just want, if you want something that tastes kind of, if, if you want a drink, you can get a much cheaper drink. If you want this kind of drink, Absolutely. you can't. It's a very specific thing, and I think that that's the thing I'm trying to get to here. It's specificity. Spe mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I got that word right. Specificity. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really hard thing to categorize. This whiskey. Um, yes, there's sure. nothing. There's nothing quite like it. There's, there really isn't. Um, you yeah. can't say, oh, well, you know, I like the Kujira, but you can get just exactly the same thing for half the price from here. No, you can't. It, you really, mm -hmm. really can't. There is nothing like this whiskey out there. And that's kind of yeah, the beautiful thing about it. Yeah, it's comparing apples to orange or, you know, kiwi, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's almost yeah. like comparing apples to like a, a Ford car. Like it's, <laughs> it's such a different beast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And mm. it, and it's not like uh, this is not going to be your uh, whiskey and coke kind of whiskey. It's, oh God! Well, you know, maybe for some people, but uh, yeah, <laughs> to some people, yeah. <laughs> but the you, you know the it will get a job done, but you know you miss out on the flavors and like you said, the histories mm -hmm. and stories behind it. And as uh, Japanese culture is is all about, it's not about the destination; it's about the journey. Mm -hmm. Enjoying yes. the ride. Exactly. You you will you'll get a nice buzz on if you drink three ounces of this, but that's not the point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Which one do you prefer, the ten or the five? I think the ten is probably going to be the more popular in general. But for personally, I, there's something about that five I really enjoy. I, I like that weird, much more umami funkiness. I think. I think in mm. general, I'm. I'm more of a fan of whiskeys that showcase their individuality through the base spirit. And I think you can really taste the base spirit a lot more in the five. 10 tastes a lot more like a whiskey. Five is a much more interesting different experience. And I think if I was tasting it blind, I might theoretically not even think this is technically a whiskey. Um, maybe a, I think it's a cognac or something, but cognac. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it does have that aroma or, mm -hmm, you know, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. And they are uh, just so impostive as well. They're not, uh, using uh, any of our like cold and steel, or and that that makes like sense that. with the uh, the neck shape here, because why would you imitate the still shape if you're not using a column still, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cool. Ah, oh, that's really neat. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so this one is available in the store right now. Um, it is normally two twenty one sixty five, and of course, every single Dram Association member, all twelve hundred strong of you, are eligible for a ten percent discount while it is featured. And it is one ninety nine forty nine. And of course, if you're watching this down the line and that uh, time period has already passed, you still always are able to get the five percent discount that is available uh, for every Dram Association member. Or if you would like that ten percent discount, simply sign up to be a Dram Association Premium member. It costs ten dollars. 
a month and you get 10% off all whiskey at full price in the uh, on strathlego.com and in store the Strath Ale Wine and Spirit Merchants. And before we move on to the last whiskey, which I'm very excited about, as you mentioned, it's a it's a limited edition. It's uh, it's Kujira, but a little bit special too. Um, I just want to uh, quickly mention the Victoria Whiskey Festival. We mentioned it at the beginning of the video, and um, everything we're doing here is uh, is part of the festival. And we are still selling off these Glencairns. If you would like a Victoria 2021 Whiskey Festival uh, Glencairn glass, you can buy them right now at strathlicker.com. Um, all of the uh, all of the profits are going to a local charity. We're changing charity every month. If you pick one up this month, all of the money is going to the Children's Health Foundation of Vancouver Island. Um, and a huge thanks to TS Global, to Bryony, and of course to Zoe as well um, for helping support our charity initiative through the local whiskey clubs. We're able to uh, uh, also um, donate a lot of uh, a lot of uh, money from the from these whiskies as well. So um, keep an eye out on the emails for updates of uh, quite how much we've managed to raise as a club. Um, I'm going to be updating you on on February's um, February's donation quite soon. It's pretty impressive, and it'll only get more impressive from here. Um, so yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Bryony, for taking part in this year's festival. Oh, it's it's a pleasure thank to have you, you. <laughs> and thank you, of course, to the Victoria Whiskey My Festival pleasure. organizers, because um, you know uh, they they put an awful lot of work into trying to get the Victoria Whiskey Festival going in 2021, and it was pulled on pulled out from underneath us uh, in you know uh, relatively late in the game. And it's unfortunate that we weren't able to put it on, but of course, it's for everyone's safety that we didn't. And we look forward to seeing you in 2022. The the plans are already in action. We're we're going to be back. That's the plan. In some way or another, we will be here. <laughs> mm -hmm. And let's move I'm on. To, excellent. Let's move on to the final whiskey of today's little tasting. We have the Kujira 12. And uh, yeah, yeah the, the whale has left uh, left the Northern Lights. It's left left the snowscape for maybe even stars. I think I can't quite tell if it's snow or stars on the 10. But now we've got this beautiful pink and blue thing. I'm not sure where it is. It's, it's gone to a different dimension, I think, which is quite apropos I think, for this whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's probably in the unicorn land. Unicorn land, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the land of, uh, of, of cotton candy and unicorns. It's um, and Tell us what what is the the big difference of the twelve over the other two? What makes it so special? All right, so well, the twelve year old is a hundred percent in sherry cask and is completely produced and aged in a different facility on Okinawa, in in a place called Kumishan. And Kumishan is the same maker of our Kujira Twenty, which is hundred percent in bourbon cask, as well as the thirty year old um, Kujira, which not available in BC market anymore. So Kumishan is uh, one of the, uh, it's even older than our Masahiro um, dessert. Kumishan has been around um, back in 1989 and they were the first one actually to start aging their awamoli, which is mm. like I mentioned before, is, is a, a novelty item in, bur uh, in barrels. Mm -hmm. So this dates back in, 1989 and so there you know if if you want to pay tributes to any of our Kujira, these are the ones to thank for because they are the first uh, pioneer in on the island to do that cool and so yeah uh, so that's the main difference between the Kujira 5 and 10 and our now the 12 and i love their bottles as well i i love the wooden tug yeah, but I was just again, about to say, is it a cork or is it a screw top? <laughs> I can't tell from the it outside. <laughs> actually a screw top. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I can see tipping it under. There's no cork in there. That's really cool. Yeah, a wooden no screw cork. top. A wooden screw top. That's yeah. awesome. I, I and, assume there's um, some plastic on the inside. <laughs> there is, uh, yeah, there's some plastic. And obviously, it's the same, similar cork. I guess they just glue it on top. Oh, it's and actually metal on the label. inside. Yeah. Yeah, it's metal. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then there's some almost like a rice paper ish um, mm -hmm. on the label, which is just fantastic, beautiful. I absolutely look, love the paper. I don't want to touch it, and you know. I know, get right? It. I'm, I'm I'm trying desperately to keep my fingers off it. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's very nice. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I'm a huge sherry fan, so uh, obviously these. Uh, really stands out for me um you know you take the rice whiskey and asian mm -hmm. sherry cast you know just imagine what kind of flavor there would be right so 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, like sherry cask whiskey is is a fantastic thing. And it really harkens back to the origin of whiskey in Japan, really. It stems from scotch. Um, yes. where, whereas uh, like Canadian and uh, American whiskey, yes, it kind of does, but it has its, it, they do things very, very differently because it was brought over, like the distillation technique was brought over from Europe, but they didn't bring the equipment or you know the grains or anything they started from scratch with an idea of how to make alcohol basically whereas in japan of course it all started really with masataka takatsuri um who mm -hmm. studied the craft in japan and in sorry in scotland and he would have scotland. he would have used sherry casks back then because you know in the 1920s i believe is when he was around in scotland at hazelburn and at longmorn and uh, in glasgow and yeah sherry mm -hmm. casks would have been a big part of of his his learning of of how to make scottish style whiskey and when he brought that back over to japan i'm sure um they probably had a real hard time getting sherry casks to japan for a while <laughs> yeah and especially during the war um they they encountered in you know um world war ii in the 1940s mm -hmm. uh, the japanese are not allies with um you know the the European countries as well as the United States. So they, they basically couldn't get any barrels. Mm. And the, the uh, Mizanar oak mentioned earlier, that's when their first uh, use of these oak in barrel aging is, mm -hmm. uh, is during that period of time. Just Which from memory they, is something that Shinjiro Tori of Tori fame was uh, was the guy that really pioneered that because Masataka Takatsuri right. thought that was an abomination because the Scots never used <laughs> used it. So it's, that's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah. So they're, yeah, so they're, I, I call it the old school uh, and then the new school. And totally. The, yeah. The and history this, of Japan. this is yeah. taking all of the all of the things that they've learned about Scottish distillation, you know, using the pot stills, using the sherry casks, but then merging it with such rich heritage of the Japanese traditions, especially uh, especially down on the island. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it's uh, I, I can't wait to put some of this in my glass, but I'm going to make you incredibly jealous. And I'm really sorry that I don't have any of this to share because I'm going to pair this with something because I think mm. and I'm sure you might agree that uh, sherry cask whiskey especially pairs superbly well with chocolate. That's right. Yeah. And I have something that was a gift to me from uh, from mm. uh, the, the good captain himself, Duke Snyder, who is uh, one of our one of our longtime viewers. And I'm sure he's watching this right now. Uh, a, a big part of our uh, of our of our whiskey clubs here. I have and I can't believe I have this because uh, this is in, this is like fairy dust. You know how some some whiskeys you're just like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm getting to try this. I can't believe I'm getting to try this chocolate. This is a whiskey barrel aged Kit Kat that he sourced mm. in Japan. That was a limited edition. That is like wow. fairy dust to try and get. So I'm sorry, Brian. Um, I, re I really <laughs> am. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try on this YouTube channel a little bit of whiskey barrel aged Kit Kat, and I'm I'm gonna have to put this in the show notes as well, so we pop up on the search terms for it. But here we go. Mm -hmm. Crack it open. There's no, there's no cork on this either, but oh, it's got I individual so foil jealous. packaging on the inside. I'm, I'm so intrigued. I have no <laughs> idea what this is going to be like. It's, it's got a little image on it that kind of, I, I don't know what that's supposed to be. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. I'll put it as close as I can. It looks like a pumpkin that's been stretched. I don't know what the picture's meant to be. Um, yeah. Well, let's, let's give it a try. And I'm going to pour myself a little bit of this uh, fantastic Kujira 12 Sherry cast to go with it. Hmm. Kampai. Kampai. Oh, that smells good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh my, that is. That does not smell like a Kit Kat. That smells like gourmet dark chocolate. They've they've really um, yeah. You know those YouTube shows where they like re uh, remake gourmet versions of fast food and stuff. This this is like that. Good lord. All right. Oh, well, that works, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like, it's like when you, when you see someone on the street who you think is your best friend and then you get closer and it's someone you've never met before. It's that kind of experience. This has so <laughs> many hallmarks that. of scotch, but it's something I've never had in my life before. That is mad. <laughs> That's cool. All right, let's try the, the Kit Kat. Wow. Wow. Okay. I don't know why it's so good. I don't understand how barrel aging impacts chocolate, but that is really good. 
it's like all the rich complexity of a, of a dark chocolate uh -huh. with out the bitterness it's it's dark chocolate but it's not bitter and i don't know how they've done that it's not like it's just add a ton of sugar to it it's just bitter free dark chocolate with some wafer that is thank you duke that is very very special i'm gonna take another bite and then i'll i'll put it away so i'm not uh, i'm not rubbing it in so much for <laughs> that's okay mm. That just reminds me, uh, in Japan, they release a whole bunch of different flavors of Kit Kat. And I, last time I saw it in a TNT local market in, mm -hmm. in the mainland, they sell uh, Umeshu, which is a plum wine Kit Kat. Awesome. And as well as they sell um, sake Kit Kat. Sake, is, nice. Uh, Jap yeah. When I was last in Japan, I took delight in trying to find as many different flavors of Kit Kat as I could. I really enjoyed the wasabi one. That was probably the weirdest oh. one. Uh, they had a yeah. sesame one as well, which I really enjoyed. Yes. Uh, I enjoyed the taro one as well. And of nice. course, their matcha one. Oh, well. yeah. And you can get yeah. that here as well, actually. Um, you can get it in the supermarkets mm -hmm. here, which is, yeah, mm -hmm. matcha Kit Kats. The matcha actually, one it's is, like white is, chocolate with the matcha have gone through the chocolate. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the one that I tried is Yem and Sakura. Mm. Blossom. Yeah. So those cool. are pretty cool. Yeah. Ah. And as much as that is a, probably the best Kit Kat I've ever had in my life, uh, this whiskey is phenomenal, isn't it? It's so, yes. it's like a bridge across cultures. It's got so many hallmarks that I look for in a single malt scotch with such a different base spirit. And so, oh, yeah. It's, it's like a lot of the bourbons I really enjoy are the ones that have been, you know, experimented on. And, you know, I like really like Opidan, which is done in a, in a, in a Spanish and French oak, Solera of that mm -hmm. uh, after it's been matured. This, this is kind of like that for me. This is... Um, this is a different uh, style of experience. It's a brand new experience, but it's familiar somehow at the same time. I feel safe drinking this, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. mm. It's plums, but it's perfumed plums somehow, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It has uh, just a little bit of licorice mm -hmm. tingling as well. And it's a nice and dry and long finish. Mm-hmm. And surprisingly, this is only 40% ABD. Is it? Blimey. Um, yeah. It, it doesn't taste only 40. Yeah. It does not, right? It, it, all the other one that we tasted so far is all 43. And this is mm -hmm. the only one that's 40, but does not taste like 40. And, and when I say it doesn't taste like 40, I don't mean to say it, it doesn't taste like, you know, a lot of people equate ABV purely with the alcohol. That's not ever really what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not saying this tastes burny or anything. This tastes mm -hmm. more full flavored than I'd expect a 40% alcohol whiskey to be. It's not about it mm -hmm. tastes alcoholic. No, not at all. I mean, yes, a little bit because it's alcohol, but you know, you know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. taste like vodka. <laughs> and I, I think what's unique uh, coming from Kumi Sheng, which is this uh, distillery that makes the Kujar 12, is this there is that licorice almost, um, I don't want to, I don't like the term acetone, but I, I don't have any other vocabulary to describe this flavor. It, the, this yeah. is their signature of, of, of mm -hmm. coming from Kumisa. It clean. has that. It's like a clean, clean. alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, I mean, this, it's one of those things. It's, it's what I refer to as the whiskey asterisk, right? Acetone, but in a good way. Like there's got an asterisk mm. after it because there's a lot of things in whiskey that I, I absolutely love and I enjoy that I wouldn't usually enjoy on its own. You know, like iodine in Lafroy. I don't have a habit of drinking iodine. Um, mm -hmm. It's, you know, but sometimes in certain circumstances, it really works and it brings it together. And I, I do kind of see where you're coming from with acetone. I think it's not quite as chemically as acetone, uh, but it does have that sort of clean alcohol thing going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on the second nose, it has a little bit of almost like a cognac or um, mm -hmm. maybe even an armagnac. Yeah, armagnac, exactly. Yeah, those those nose scents. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I, I was about to say something really silly. Then I was like, yeah, maybe even maybe even more like an Oloroso sherry. I was like, of course it's Oloroso sherry. It's a sherry cask. That's not weird. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> but yeah, it does have a sort of like a the funky. Um, you know the yeah. um if you've ever um seen sherry being made you might see a lot of sherries have that floor they call it the, the layer of yeast that sits on top of the the sherry vats it's got mm -hmm. that sort of funky yeast thing mm. with the sherry yeah yeah i yeah two two thumbs up on the kajira 12 for me that is that is gorgeous um if you are liking this um as well for those of you who are drinking along at home or if you're not able to drink along at home if you are 
you know, watching and thinking that sounds right up my alley. It is available right now at strathlicker.com. Uh, regular price two ninety three eighty three, and with your ten percent off, that brings it all the way down to two sixty four forty five. Two sixty four forty five for a yeah one of a kind twelve year old sherry cast Japanese single. Yeah, single distillery, single grain whiskey. Single grain distillery, and it's uh, limited edition. There's limited quantity. There's no more. We're not getting any more in. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, not single think, cask, there, right? It's just a small batch, I assume. It's a small batch, yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Then yeah, this get it while the getting's good. This is this is good mm -hmm. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, as you're pairing it with Kit Kat chocolate. <laughs> the other day I had uh, um, macarons made by my friend. Mm. And I think this will re goes really well with those as well, especially the color. Yeah, nice. Mm. I can imagine that working quite well. All right, well, this has been a wonderful lineup. Uh, so just to recap, we had the Shinobu Pure Malt, the Shinobu 10-year-old Pure Malt, the Kujira Single Grain 5-year, the Kujira Single Grain 10-year, and then finally, um, to be blunt, my favorite of the lineup. It's very, 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 very good. But the Kujira 12, the Sherry Cask single grain as well. Um, yeah, a, a wonderful selection of five utterly unique Japanese whiskeys. Uh, thank you very much for presenting them, Bryony. It's It's been a pleasure having you back on the show. Thank you. It's really my pleasure. And I, I, I'm I, glad that you, know, you enjoyed them. And I, I hope everybody on uh, the Drain Association uh, enjoyed them as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you again. Uh, I'm sure we'll be working together again for some of your other products coming up uh, in later in the year. I, I look forward to that happening. Absolutely. We have some exciting uh, brand new products coming in as mm -hmm. well. So, And, uh, and actually, I may as well, break, breaking news here on the internet as well. Um, if you're a big Isla fan, like uh, we just heard that Brian is, um, there's one distillery he wasn't allowed to mention when he was talking about Isla because it's part of his portfolio now, of course, Kilcommon. Um, <laughs> yes. We will be doing a Kilcommon tasting in the future. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Fantastic. And uh, we will be sharing this honor with Legacy, but uh, there's going to be a, only us and Legacy will be having some of the, um, some of the more rarer Kilcommon releases here in BC. Um, and we're really mm -hmm. grateful for TS Global for working with us on those. And we look forward to promoting some more incredible whiskey with you guys. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. And you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, good night, all viewers at home. We'll see you next time on Drinking Out Loud. Find your way home. Your